All right, this is lecture five, and this is just my personal journal. I just want to get that out of the way. This is just my journal. I'm not trying to shortcut any of ICT's work. I, I absolutely love the mentorship. I appreciate the time that he's taken, and I appreciate that he's taken us through his process with his son as well. I do appreciate that, and I'm going to take advantage of this. And this is just my personal notes. I'm not trying to shortcut anything because I'm, I'm not ICT, and therefore I... I don't have that much knowledge. I'm just here to document and keep myself accountable. So let's get straight into this. What to focus on for me is screenshotting the live charts and collecting forward data. So I think I, I really want to focus on screenshotting the charts as it's happening and also screenshotting charts before and then after journal annotations, journal concerns, and journal uh, areas in which I'm just not so, I'm kind of hesitant. And then therefore learn from that journal that with positivity no negativity at all to reframe frame in that subconscious mind i'm not letting any negativity in my subconscious mind um also what i want to focus on is high resistance signatures every every day that you're looking to engage the market you're just looking for pretty much where smart money's done the work if they haven't done the work yet if there's been no manipulation then i'm not trying to trade yet or not trying to look to trade yet and until that happens then i'll wait i'll set my hands and also new day opening gap i really do love that this Mentorship so far is kind of focused on new day opening up and new week opening up theory because that's something that I was kind of like already looking at and I already resonated with and the fact that we're diving deeper into this like oh boy because new day opening up like if you do the back testing with it and if you see it if you put it on your chart and you repeatedly do that I will say from the time that I have it's just it's just there's nothing like it there's nothing like it is it's just magical. Uh, so time and price kind of dumbed down uh, time time. What are we looking for? 7 a.m. 8 a.m. 9 a.m. What are we looking for price? What does that mean? What does price even mean? We're just looking for liquidity or inefficiency new day opening gap is a type of inefficiency And uh, it's just some notes right there measure moves or simply projections on where price could hit They're not end all be alls. We're kind of just looking for PD arrays but they are mathematically derived highs and lows, and they are the easiest low-hanging fruit targets. Price, price action like it's projected. Previous day high, I'm not really gonna go over that too much because I don't really resonate with that too much, so I'm not really even gonna focus on that. New day opening gap. Um, for me, a new day opening gap just proves that there's an algorithm help develop a bias. If it's under 20 handles, just eyeball it. We color outside new day opening gap. Oh, okay, so we can color outside the new day opening app because it isn't time for price to go over that. And uh, when he was going over the Asia range with that uh, initial consolidation, um, that's definitely something to rewatch for sure. TJF um, briefly, briefly went over it and then the stream ended. I don't really like to look for TJF either. That doesn't really resonate to me, so I don't really care too much about looking for the TJF profile. Uh, time. Asia, London, AM, PM sessions, which ones to partake in, develop the bias for a day, to develop bias for the day, session, or even an hour, there has to be a starting point. There has to be a starting point. Where are you going to start from? If you're trading the Asia session, Asia session starts at 6. If you, or that's, what, that's when the day opens. And then 7 to 9 is when you're looking to trade Asia, Asia, Asia session. The markets will not move unless it's time for them to move. No concepts will work, no matter. No matter the concept will work unless if its time is considered. Opening range, when we have a gap lower, when there's a large gap lower, like Friday, and also we're gonna go into the charts, 70% of the time that midpoint will get traded to. More often than not, there will be a trade to that mid gap. So no matter, or most of the time, 70% of the time, not all the time, there will be a trade to at least consequent encroachment of that opening range gap. And then there also was a nice uh, little since we took a short-term low on regular trading, I, I I thought that was kind of nice, and I'll I'll continue to journal that as well, and also journal the signatures that were already highlighted in the, in the in the mentorship. The first initial dealing range that gets created will be influential throughout the day. It just sets an initial range to build slash engineer that liquidity. We want to see price go up or down then create a dealing range and then go from there so usually within the first hour price isn't really going to respect that new day opening gap because it's not really time to it's just going to mainly try to focus on creating a dealing range and yeah so i don't really want to go over my notes because then it feels like i'm trying to shortcut 
what I think, and then I might have misinterpreted something misinterpreted something the ICT said which I don't want to do I don't want to spread false false information so we're just gonna hop right into the charts so anyway this is that Asia Asia session and then this is the the fractal price that w went over so as we see here 6 p.m. starts we have a new day opening gap I know it's kind of hard to see with these um, standard deviation projections so I'm just gonna talk about these first if you have the initial buy side to sell side I'm using the bodies here negative one gets hit right there just by using the bodies and here we have the bodies for here as well and then negative two almost gets hit if we just use the high to low here negative 1.5 gets hit and that's a nice uh, standard deviation projection which is wait 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 why okay yeah and then ICT uh, when he took a trade he used the midpoint between these two projections which I'm honestly not sure why he didn't do he didn't just look for 1.5 maybe he thought or I think the theory was that price could get overzealous here by delivering to buy side and since negative one's right above buy side that's usually what would be considered but since we have negative 1.5 we're just looking for maybe a low hanging fruit objective within that so that's probably why he took constant encroachment I don't understand fully so I'm not gonna act like I do so here we have this consequent uh, here here we have a new day opening gap and here we just come up and we take buy side and then we come back down and then we have our sell side minor sell side so now we have created a dealing range here so we have initial buy side and we have initial sell side so we have an initial dealing range and if we want to take that dealing range then we can grade that dealing range to see what price is most likely to do range we have initial initial displacement higher come back down into this volume imbalance right here into that 25% level and then look here we end up having displacement through new day opening gap and through 50% of this dealing range here and this dealing range high to low what are we most likely to do We're most likely to head to buy side here and then buy side here so here we have displacement up through that since we've had this displacement leg, this will probably be a new, uh, a breakaway gap, and new day opening gap will also act as support here because we have created this initial dealing range, and now it is time to because it's 7 p.m. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. is the uh, Asia Asia session is what we're looking for. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. This gets left as a breakaway gap, doesn't even get traded into, and ICT um, uses this as an order block uses this as an order block we also have a volume imbalance but when he enters on this order block he doesn't use the body to enter he used his consequent encroachment of this wick which hopefully we'll get some more lectures on that because that is actually uh, precise there so I want to know more behind the theory of this wick with the order block because he chose usually whenever I look at order blocks I try to just get opening price but actually he used the constant encroachment of that wick and that ends up being beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we end up seeking buy side, we deliver outside of that. We have a false bull flag because we've already done the work at the highs and then we end up displacing lower. And then here's that initial buy side that gets set, gets respected here. And here we have a London session right here, 12 a.m. to 12.30 is the opening range for London kind of went over that a little bit here we have a volume imbalance right here it gets respected very nicely so this volume imbalance getting respected tells us do we respect that no it tells us that we likely might want to seek sell side you know breaking down then we end up displacing through new day opening gap then we end up seeking a constant encroachment of this new week opening gap and what are we doing here? We're just generating liquidity generating liquidity it's not really time yet although there is fluctuations I'm not really looking to engage in this. New day opening gap, boom, 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 boom. And here is 7 a.m. So this is kind of when I, I care about price. Here we have 7 a.m. We end up taking this high here in a inefficiency here. Two birds with one stone. We end up displacing lower institutional or entry drill. This is a balanced price range here. This inefficiency right here. 
Look at that. Displacement lower. Is it just orbital entry drill? Notice how we displace through uh, new day opening gap here very nicely, and we now left a potential breakaway gap. And look at all these uh, lows here. So that this is the draw liquidity right there. And then we come right down perfectly to new week opening gap, new week opening gap low, very nicely. And we end up creating the equal highs here at that initial sell side, initial sell side level. Equal highs here, and then right here, new, new week opening gap. So as soon as we react like we did here, as soon as we react, we have a reaction here, displacement back up, inefficiency. Notice how there's no pro there's no real prominent short term low here. There's also no other inefficiency within this like a price. So what is most likely going to get drawn to this imbalance right here? Same thing here. There there's no prominent short term low here within this like a price, and there's also no efficiency. So what what are we going to refer to? This imbalance right here. And notice here when we trade into it, we barely tap it. We barely tap this. So we kind of have some unfinished business here. And also, we have these equal highs up here. Created there. So market opens. If we zoom into uh, regular trading hours, let me take off the new week opening gap. It's kind of too much. We've taken this short-term low here. So then we immediately tap up the buy side. And then we take that initial sell side level not closing this gap fully and then we come back down now let's toggle back over to electronic trading hours we talk we come back down to this inefficiency right here and so we don't take sell side there we just come back down to that inefficiency and and what what is what has been kind of discussed as a pda pd array if we have a down close candle when we're bullish and we don't touch constant encroachment this now becomes an order block i'm going to use these two down close candles there as my order block very nicely that's beautiful right there and what else has been discussed we have a breaker leg in price right here the inversion level is going to get respected beautifully gets respected here and notice as well as what's happening there, there there's there's there kind of is a lot of elements but they all blend together 950 macro we create a turning point with a 950 macro 1050 macro we kind of consolidate 1150 macro create a, we have a little sell model here into this inefficiency and then we end up repricing higher and then this i don't really want to go over this at all there, there's there's absolutely nothing here there's absolutely nothing there so i i don't really want to go over that so we go go into a 15 second chart just kind of want to see fluctuations around 9 30. so as you can see we have 9 30 we have the opening bell we have taken that short term low on regular trading hours. So we immediately trade higher, then we trade back lower, then we trade back higher into these highs here, but we barely purge these highs. Then we come back down. Then we refer to this imbalance here. We end up taking buy side there. Shift in market structure, imbalance right there. What is that? 2022 model. Notice consequent encroachment gets held very nicely. Displacement lower. Then we come back down to that inefficiency. So right here, we have a fair value gap in, and we have a fair value gap out. Same thing. The inversion level gets respected. We have a down close candle that doesn't touch constant encroachment. Therefore, this can be considered an order block. We don't trade into it, but we can use these as a, these three consecutive down close candles as an order block. Use this as a mitigation. We don't really trade back into it. We kind of we leave it as a breakaway, which is what we want to see. We come back down into this inefficiency. Same thing again. This is an order block, and then we we come up to buy side. And notice this as well is that is that breakaway gap discussed earlier. And notice what time this is happening as well. 10 a.m. around a little bit past that 9:50 macro, and we come up. We tap true day open. That's as well, I feel like um, during the mentorship, I've kind of haven't been using true date in, in, in 830 open, but smart money is going to accumulate below true date open. Then we come up and we take buy side. I also haven't been paying that much attention to ES, 
Let's see if we have an SMT here. I feel like we might have an SMT at the lows. I think ES was actually stronger. Do we take the A54 low? This Friday. Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna go too much into that. So we end up taking uh you know coming up into true day into that breakaway gap, and we end up displacing lower. This inefficiency gets referred to. Now we're in a sell program back to that inefficiency. We touch that inefficiency, and then we end up seeking buy side. We have a buy side delivery here. And we kind of come back. And I don't really want to do too much analysis on this because Overall, like what are we what are we doing? We're kind of just consolidating. There's not much clean price action here. We're we're definitely in a consolidation profile. And even this run in price here, in my opinion, this just doesn't seem like a good uh price run. But we do have these equal highs here that we end up do drawing into. I don't really love this price run, but we end up taking these equal highs here, formed in Asia, or sorry, London, not Asia. London, London highs get targeted there. And we end up consolidating into close. And notice, 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 I think that ICT knows that we're we're consolidating. I think ICT knows that we're bound to consolidate. And that's that's my must my, my long term bias as well. I'm sticking to we're we're likely just going to consolidate. We've had this big large range here. All the way lower. We've had this low established now. So now what do we have? We have a dealing range high and a dealing range low. Where are we at in that dealing range? We've just traded, sorry, there's a lot of annotations, but we've just traded to equilibrium of that. We also have this up close candle that we could fulfill this inefficiency, trade back to the up close candle, which I might wanna see. Overall, I kinda have to see a little bit more. But we have just now Taking buy side, buy side, buy side, buy side. We have this inefficiency that could get referred to. And we also have this inefficiency that I'm looking at as well. Maybe a constant recursion of that wick could get referred to. Overlapped with this imbalance. So I kind of want to see um, no, nothing that I really love to glean for. But other than that, there's not really much I had for that Friday that Friday lecture, I thought it was a great lecture. Always, always, always a good lecture. Always a good lecture, in my opinion. Good psychology to get out of that video, as well as good technicals. And yeah, I guess that's really all I got for this one. Other than that, I will be back for another, another journal.